Hello everybody, this is Shannon with Beads and Babble, back with another tutorial. And I do apologize that I have not uploaded in a couple weeks. I have been struggling with allergies. It's my first spring here in Tennessee. And I have been watering from the nose, the eyes. I know too much information, but um, it has been very difficult to do um, any projects um, at just planning it. It's just I've been miserable and sinus headaches. So I do apologize. And if I sound nasally, that is why I'm still working through it. Um, but today we're going to focus on um, the brick stitch, which is used for numerous um, weaving projects. But today we're going to focus on how to make fringe um, on earring components or links. Um, but you can add beads um, to them and you can do the fringe in various lengths and I know fringe earrings are making a huge comeback lately um, so I wanted to kind of sneak this in there and I'm going to keep it very simple so this is very beginner friendly so you're getting um, the technique uh, down and then you can venture on to more complicated um, fringe techniques or lengths of fringe because when you get uh, into the longer fringe it takes more thread so you're working with you know that and the best advice I can give you with that is slow and steady with the thread because it knots and you just don't want to be in the middle of your fringe airing and have it not so bad that you have to basically cut your project apart to uh, fix it and also another good um, advice from somebody who's done this for a long time is double triple check your counts of your beads when you're doing fringe earrings because I don't know how many times I thought I had 15 beads on there and I only had 14 or I had 16. So double check your um, beads before you stitch them in there. All right, today we're going to be working with um, a variety of, well actually just very simple, two uh, different colors of 10 aught seed beads. Um, these are Japanese seed beads, so the holes are very um, symmetrical, very um, size-wise, um, very consistent. And um, so they'll ma it'll make it easy to pass the thread through it several times. So, and honestly, you can use um, 10 or 11 aught seed beads, both Czech or um, Japanese, because the thread that we'll be using today is very... Um, easily pass through those holes several times. Um, I'm going to use a thread burner, some sharp shears, some chain nose pliers, and that's just for opening the ear wires. Um, we're going to use this um, thread. I like this thread. You can use uh, Nimo Nemo um, thread as well. Um, this KO thread is uh, one of my favorites. Um, because it tends to not fray um, as bad as some others. And I do pass it through the thread conditioner once. Um, it is a 100% nylon thread made in Japan. Uh, it will need to be pre-stretched before you start your project, and I'll show you that. It's just, just simply stretching the thread through your hands. We're going to also be using some 2 millimeter hollow core uh, silver-plated metal beads. That's just an accent bead. You can use a third color of a seed bead which in substitute for these. I'm also going to be using a 6x4 um, crystal rondelle. I just put that in the center here just to give it a little bit more pizzazz. You don't need to use that. I also selected um, these kind of botanical type um, links here and we're going to brick stitch around this small hoop here in order to add the little short fringe that we'll be doing here. Um, my thread conditioner, and this is a uh, size 10 or 12 needle. Um, it's a flexible one, not rigid like the English needle. You can, as long as the needle um, accommodates uh, passing through these particular um, size 10 aught seed beads, you can use that. It, usually the on the packaging, it'll recommend what size uh, needle for what size beads. So that is... For that, and I'm going to set these aside because we don't need those quite yet. So I'm going to cut the thread, and you won't need a ton of thread for this because the fringe is relatively short, and so is the uh, and the loop that we're going to brick stitch around is small. 
So I usually cut, I always cut more than I ever need. So I'm going to do a half wingspan, which is basically from my um, shoulder all the way stretched across to my the length of my arm. And then I'll probably roll a little bit more. So I will tell you what I, that this is in feet. So if you guys really want to measure, you can. There's one, two, three. So roughly about three feet, uh, six inches. So now I'm going to stretch. So what I usually do is I take one end of the thread and about, I don't know, five inch sections, five to six inch sections, and I just pull on it to give it the stretch because you don't want your uh, fringe stretching out because the thread will after a while. So we just kind of pre-stretch it and I'll just go th through the thread length twice. And this is especially important with the longer fringe. Not so much for the short fringe because it's not going to be very heavy. Um, and also it depends on the beads you're using. If you're going to be using um, heavier beads, say gemstone beads or something, that'll have more effect on the stretching of the thread as well. Now I'm going to take my thread conditioner and I usually just hold it over with my thumb and then I just pull it through to give it a good coating. And then I'll just close this back up. It just helps with the um, keeping the uh, thread from fraying. So now I'm going to thread this tiny needle, <laughs> hopefully. There we go. Look at that. I still have it, guys. I still have it. All right. So, and then I just keep a cork. It, this came off of a test tube um, propagation station I had, and it works great because it keeps me from losing that needle because it's very, very small and thin. Alrighty, so I'm just going to make sure I have the orientation of the um, leaves going the way this one is. And now I'm going to take the non-needle side of the thread and pass it through the hoop. I'm going to leave myself about a six inch tail. I always, and that's important because you're going to tie a knot and you're going to also use that to weave back through your project at the end. I'll sh show you that. So, and it also is a good um, length for holding the tension on that side. I just did in the first part of the overhand knot and then I'm going to do the surgical part, which is passing it through t the tail through the hoop twice rather than once. And then I'm going to bring it down and give it a good tug so it's snug against there. And I'll bring in the camera here in a second. Oops. And I'm just making sure that knot's up on one side because that's where we're going to start. Give it a good tug there. I'll bring the camera in. So this is kind of the important part where we're going to brick stitch onto this hoop here. So what I'll do with this tail here is I'll wrap it around my fingers so I can have some good tension and I'm bringing over actually I want to make sure that these aren't crossed over Put that one in there all right so I have the tension sorry tension the tail against my fingers, and then this is the um, thread with the needle on it. And I'm gonna make sure that knot's down there. And we're gonna mirror the design of this earring here. I call these kind of my starburst earrings because they're short and the fringe kind of just jets out. All right, so I'm gonna take, and I'm gonna pick up two of these matte brown seed beads. I'm gonna slide them down. The length of the thread. I'm going to pass the needle through the hoop. Now the needle and thread is through the hoop and I'm going to go through the back through the bottom of the second bead.
Now, this is the beginnings, and this is going to, this first bead will be a little wonky on you. Don't worry about that. So now we're going to pass through the bottom of this first bead, and this will kind of cinch it down. I'll show you here. And then back up through the second bead. This is just going to give us kind of an anchored. You'll get it. And just make sure you're nice and taut here if it's loose. You can pull out the thread here at the bottom. Get it tight. And then it'll go back. All right, and then I'm going to grab another brown. It's going to take six to go around this loop. And I'm using my finger to kind of keep that bead there. I'm pulling the thread. I'm sorry if I go out a frame here because this thread's so long. Doing the same thing, going up through the bottom of that new bead that I put on. And then I'm just giving it some good pull to keep good tension. To get that bead to suck down onto the uh, curve of the link here. So I'm picking up another bead, passing the needle through the back side of the loop, coming in. So the thread comes up through the front. And the thread is going up through this one, down through this one, through the loop. And then I'm going to come back with the needle up through the bottom of that. This is why they call it the brick stitch. See that? How that's going. And I'm just pulling it in snug against the curve of that loop. And keep tension on it because that's going to keep those beads sucked down against the um, component that you're weaving on. Them too. And then I'm picking up another bead. Passing it, the needle through the back side of the loop that we're weaving the beads onto. And then I'm going to go up through the bottom of that bead. Bringing it down. Okay, and there's five. We're going to do one more. I'm just kind of look sometimes these beads are not particularly pretty so I'll throw it off there all right same thing back up through the box and this is a good way to practice um, you can do this with any kind of component that you can weave on you can do it to round um, square, triangle, beads, or excuse me, components, but you can get it on there. I'll just go in here. All right. So now I'm going to go do the same thing as I did to the first one is I'm going to go back through this one. It just helps anchor the last bead against the elements and then come back through that one. And now we're going to add the little short fringe on. So I'm going to take and pick up three of these olive matte beads and one of the two millimeter silver metal beads and bring it up. And then I'm going to push down the two millimeter. So we're not going to pass back through that. We're going to go back up through the bottom of the olive and this first brown bead. Just giving it a good tug. Now I'm going to pass the needle down through the second bead. 
This will be our second fringe. Sometimes a fringe just wants to be difficult. All right. So now we have the thread coming out the second bead. So I'm going to pick up three more olive seed beads and one more if I can here. All right, silver. Pulling it down. I'm going to go back through the olive and the brown bead that we initially came out of. Not jab myself in the finger. Try not to. I will do another tutorial on this fringe bead. Um, fringe. And a lot of times I'll pull it down to the mat so I can pull on the last bead to get that uh, thread to make sure that thread is all the way up against and there's no slack in the thread. Hi. Goodness. And this is usually I'll work with my thread off the table so it hangs down, but since I'm recording, I can't do that. So it give yourself plenty of room when you're dealing with a lot of thread because it will grab everything. And you'll want to make sure you don't do that where you're, that'll cause a knot. Make sure you're, the thread is always untangled before you put any tension on it or else you'll have a big old knotted mess. Three olive. And a silver. That's why I chose to do a project with short uh, fringe for a starter one. Because when you get into the longer fringe, which I have some examples I'll show you here in a second. It is a lot more um, frustrating uh, when you're, because you, you, you can be, I should say because you're dealing with a lot more thread and the potential for knotting and catching on other stuff. And it just, yeah. So I figured this will be a good way for you guys to learn the brick stitch and then you can venture out from the here. So I'm repeating the pattern of the three olives, seed beads, and then the silver. And then I'm always, I'm not going through the silver a second time. That's my stopper bead at the end of the fringe, which you will always need. And then I'm going back through this olive and then back through the um, brick stitched brown bead. It's the component. And then it's just like slow and steady with the pulling of the thread, keeping tension on it. And then that's another thing with this one. I want lots of tension because I want the fringe to be spiky. But when you get into the long fringe and you want it to be lay well and flat. I have the wrong beads because I'm talking. Um, you want to. I'll, well, I'll show you in the tutorial. I won't get too in it. But you don't want to have so much tension that the fringe is going to be um, laying awkwardly and and not flat. There's lots of um, good tutorials on the brick stitch too on YouTube besides mine. Um, they have some amazing um, tutorials on there. Want to venture out and um, look at some of the other creators. A great job. Um, explaining it as well. And this is just a nice fun uh, earring that can be made like relatively quick. Um, 
definitely has some visual interest and it'll teach you the brick stitch. All right, so now we have our little short spiky fringes um, and they're attached to the beads that we brick stitched onto the um, component here that's going to be the body of the earring. So what I'm gonna do now is I am going to pick up this rondelle, and then a brown bead. And I'm gonna go through just a step, sorry guys. Paying attention. So you're gonna pick up the rondelle and one of the brown beads, and then I'm gonna separate the brown bead from the rondelle and go back through it and then I'm gonna go through the hoop, the loop in the middle of the, so it's basically gonna be a stopper right there. And then I'm gonna turn it over and I'm gonna go through the opposing bead on the outside. So the, it came out of this one and we go back and what I'm gonna do, and it just attached to the hoop, I'm gonna weave now The thread back through the brown beads that we did through the brick stitch. You do not have to do this element if you just want to leave the spiky fringe on there you can do that too. So you don't have to do this next step. I just like to add a little I don't know it felt kind of empty in the middle but I did another pair of these where I did not put the crystal in there and it's super cute too. Now, so I'm weaving back through the brown beads only. Needle and thread. Carefully not to tangle my thread up in these little spiky fringe pieces. Getting it caught up in the other tail, which you can. Just be patient and watch your thread and don't, don't pull on it until you're absolutely certain that everything is aligned as it should be because that's how knots are formed and that gets really frustrating. When you've completed something and you've prematurely pulled that thread and it's knotted up so bad that you just have to cut your project apart. Oh yes, it's made me cry before. Especially on uh, loomed bracelets oh, and you've spent all that time on a pattern and that's that's another thing is they I think they have nowadays where they have either I know they have uh, peyote um, charts where you can, you know, do your pattern and everything. I'm not sure if they have it. Um, well, they probably do for the brick stitch where you can generate your um, your pattern um, on the computer and then go from there. Okay. So now I am taking both tails. The one, the six inch, and the need the the thread that's attached to the needle, and I'm going to tie another knot here after passing back through all the brown beads. This is just going to secure it. Same knot as before. Overhand one pass through, and then two pass through for the. good there. Now I'm going to do I'm going to go back through the brown beads again with the 
needle portion of the thread. And I'm just going to go back through a couple and then down through the fringe of this third one. Just down probably through the brown bead and down through the second olive bead. You can use your needle to pull that thread back when you see it kind of doing its best to try to get knotted. All right, now I'm going to bring in the thread burner. And this is where this thread burner is a lifesaver. And then I'm just going to get it hot and I'm going to remove that tail off. And then I'm going to see you have a t I have a ton of thread left. There's probably two feet of thread left here. So you can shorten the length if you want and go like three feet if you choose to. Now I'm taking the needle and I'm threading the other tail, the six inch tail, onto the needle because I'm going to weave it back through the beads as well. I know there's different ways of closing off beadwork. Um, you find the one that you like the best that works for you. I have always done it this way um, this because it's the way I was taught, um, especially when you're like doing bracelets and stuff on the loom. You um, That way you don't have those unsightly knots on your, um, on your projects on the side and stuff. Um, you can still do the knots, but it'll, when you weave the tail of the thread back through the project, it pulls that knot into the bead and it looks, it just, to me, it looks more finished. So I'm going to do the same with this as I am weaving the thread back through these brown beads. It's like a zigzag. Go down through the fringe of this last one through the second before I thread burn off this tail. And especially with earrings that that thread is not going to work loose. Um, and then I'm going to burn off the end. I'd burn it over to the side so I don't put my hand on it and burn myself. So, and then you have your second earring. And then I'm going to take the chain nose and I'm going to open this earring loop and I'm going to go to the side, not pulling apart, but to the side. And I'm going to make sure that my component is facing the correct way with the crystal facing outward. And then I'm just moving that back. So we have our map. <laughs> It'll be difficult. Come on. We have our matched pair of what I like to call stun burst earrings with the crystal in the middle. Let's see if I can put them on one of these. It might be a little bit easier to hold. These are quick, cute, simple, lightweight earrings. Um, I'm actually taking uh, several of these to the um, market with me. They're just really cute. Now I'm going to show you examples with this technique of the brick stitch that you can do here. Needle in the cork. All right, so this is a sample on a square component. I actually brick stitched two um, 10 aught seed beads here, and then I added. Um, bugle beads and then what I did was I just strung the bugle beads in and then went back through and this is kind of like a looped kind of fringe at the bottom super easy I can show you that in the next uh, tutorial too and then in the middle I added a dagger just weaving back through and adding the dagger into the middle you can use you know, uh, use different drop beads as well not just a dagger and you can also integrate uh, integrate uh, chain to these too. 
Like I've seen on um, Instagram, there is a lady that does some beautiful fringe earrings and she uses these uh, lotus pendants a lot and she'll drape tra a chain or, you know, and you can also use, um, experiment with different uh, size beads and stuff, but she, you know, you can take these, um, these components here and brick stitch onto the, the flat portions here, and then you can attach chain. There's all different kinds. I mean, you can even do it on components that are, you know, that are smaller and do a, a thinner uh, fringe lengths. Also, um, the, the, I have the tutorial on how to make these on the channel, and you can do the fringe off of the actual loop here with the brick stitch. I mean, you can, there's so many different options. Now, these are the longer fringe earrings, and this these um, are done the exact same way as these little star um, sunburst earrings that we did. The only thing is different is the fringe is longer. And then, you know, these are the, this is the stopper bead at the end of the fringe. And then it's I'm threading the needle back up through the length of the fringe. And this is just a about, a, I would say, a 25 millimeter uh, round uh, laser cut um, component. And then these are, this first layer is brick stitch. You can do, uh, like I said, you can do a double layer of beads. And this is a single, like these were a single, but there's there's endless options and you're just learning the technique of the brick stitch. And you can do all of these different different earring types with the brick stitch. And this is an this is a work in progress here that I did, I started, but this is another form of doing it, is where you're you're going up with the fringe on this and it just depends on how many of your your single roll of brick stitch that you do and that's how many fringe you're going to get and there is an art to figuring out the lengths and uh doing it like on this one you're always if you want a point you have to do an odd number of brick stitch beads on the component um so and then i added here these are turquoise beads they're uh three millimeter i believe um turquoise beads um so you can and then you can also do larger uh, seed beads eight aught you can even do six aught seed beads if you want a more chunky look or whatever but remember this is going to add weight to your earrings i mean these aren't horribly heavy but they've got a definite more weight than this or this one um but they're sure really pretty and then like i said the tension is very important when you get into the longer fringe and keeping it straight and you'll want to tell your customers too that you always want to hang fringe earrings um never just like throwing them in a jewelry box because that'll just degrade the thread and also play havoc with the um the fringe the way it lays so it's kind of important in that sense but yeah they're they're very fun, uh, especially for summertime. I know a lot of people like to uh, bring out the fringe in the summertime. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial um, on different uh, styles. But all of these, like I said, is the basic technique of the brick stitch. And the only thing that is different are the the sizes of the beads, the length of the fringe. Feel free to experiment. That's what's what this is for is to you know experience you know your creative side work you know test things out um you know throw in some beads that you know you like well maybe these will work you know maybe they won't um but feel free to experiment with it and get creative on your um hold it back this up a little bit and you know, venture out into your own style and see what you come up with and share if you feel like you want to. Um, I'll never pressure you to do that, but I'd be awesome if you wanted to share some pictures of your finished projects with me. Um, my email is beadsandbabble at gmail.com. Feel free to send me pictures of products, um, projects that you've done, and and let me know how uh, it's working out. And if you're enjoying these videos, please like and subscribe. Um, I do normally post uh, pretty regularly unless I'm feeling under the weather. 
So, and until the next tutorial, I'll be seeing you guys.